Okay, fam, can we hold hands and pray that this shirt looks ironed? Because I didn't iron it and I'm too lazy to. It's gonna bother me in editing if it doesn't look ironed. <laughs> Hey guys, so today we're going to be making a Pirates of the Caribbean skull cake. This is a skull from the poster. I actually say Caribbean, but when I say Pirates of the Caribbean, it sounds off. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is buy this skull mold. Where? I don't know, maybe Amazon. I bought this at TJ Maxx or Marshalls, I don't remember. It was a store for sure, but I don't remember. <laughs> if I find it on Amazon, I'll put it in the description box. Otherwise, I'm sorry guys. I baked two chocolate cakes in it, and if you notice, they kind of spilled over the side of the pan, and that's because I wanted to make sure that there was cake all the way to the top of the mold. It just makes it easier to work with. Now I leveled both of my cakes off and then I placed them onto a cake board. I added some buttercream onto the middle of the bottom piece and then added the top of the skull. This is one of my favorite molds. I've used it to create so many different skulls, so if you want to take a look at those, they're in the description box. I'm giving this a crumb coat. Because there's a lot of different crevices, it's easier to give this a crumb coat with your fingers and your hands. And it's also more sanitary if you're wearing gloves. You don't have to. It's okay if you don't have gloves. I don't care. I won't tell anybody. And I placed this cake in the fridge to cool for about 30 minutes just so that the butter could solidify. Then I took my cake out, rolled out a large piece of black fondant, and covered the entire skull. Now I'm just using my fingers and some fondant tools to push the fondant into all of the different crevices to make sure that I get all of the features correct. You guys, I was working so fast when I was doing this. Black fondant is known to crack because there's so much food coloring in it. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't give it the opportunity to. It did eventually in some parts, but I'm hiding it very well, you guys. <laughs> Once I kind of outlined his eyes, his nose, and his mouth with my fingers, I'm using some fondant tools to add more detail. And you can't see it because it's off camera, but there's a computer screen over here somewhere. I'm just looking at the poster constantly to make sure I get all of the features on the skull correct. There were a lot of times where I made a mistake of pushing too hard on the fondant with my hands, but after I realized how aged it was supposed to be, I kind of did it intentionally because it looked good. Now the thing about this skull that really drew me in were all of the gold details. To create these details, I rolled out some really ugly yellow fondant. I'm working with this color because it kind of resembles the gold luster dust that I'm going to be painting it with afterwards. I'm just rolling it out super thin and just placing on top some templates I made that look like the gold on the poster. I'm just cutting all of these pieces out with an X-Acto knife, adding a little bit of vodka to the place where they're supposed to be, and then placing them on. I know I shouldn't cuss, but this was really awesome. Placing all of these different features on, it's just, it looks incredible. Now the poster only shows the front of the skull, so for the back of the skull, I just took all of the front features, just changed them a little bit, and then placed them onto the back. You can do anything you want. You can even just leave it black if you want. I was so tempted to do that, but then I wanted to make the cake spin, so I was like, I can't just have a black cake at the back. That looks lazy, and I don't, I still don't want people to know that I'm lazy. I want to make sure that the gold pieces look a part of the black skull, so I'm using some bonding tools to just blend the edges into the black. So it looks kind of like it's embedded in the skull. Now I'm gonna place this back into the fridge to set again and I'm gonna work on creating some more fun pieces. He's got like braids, this guy. And to create these braids, I use little bits of different colored fondants. I just roll them into different shapes, balls, squares, triangles. One piece looked like a feather, the other one looked like a tooth, I think. I didn't know how to create a braid out of something edible, so I'm using a needle and thread. I felt like I was making a bomb bracelet when I was doing this. And if this were actually like beads and not fondant, I would totally rock this. I'm gonna wrap the thread around a toothpick so that I can just plunge the toothpick into the cake when it's time to place them on. 
Now on the poster, this skull has two bones that are crossed behind it. And I really wanted to make those bones, so I'm taking two arts and crafts sticks and then just wrapping them in some of the mustard brown fondant. I'm really trying to make sure that this doesn't look perfect, so I'm just using my fingers and my hands to make sure it looks like worn out and beat up. Set these pieces aside to be placed on at the end. I'm going to take out my cake and start to do fondant work on that. I rolled out little pieces of gray fondant and I just placed them on to be his teeth. He's got a couple gaps, eating a lot of candy, eating a lot of cake, getting a lot of diabetes. This guy would definitely not be cast in a Colgate commercial. Now this skull also has like a tusk or like a horn coming out of the side of it. I don't know what it is. I made it out of fondant and I just stuck it in. I thought that the gold pieces looked too clean, so I took my paring knife and just started to scratch it up. I just wanted it to look like it was roughed up. You know, the way that I roughed up your dad last night. Oh. <laughs> now after I placed that on, I just started painting all of my mustard pieces gold. With some gold luster dust. I love gold luster dust. Now after I finished painting the skull, I also painted the four bones. To give this a more withered and aged look, I took some black and white pearl luster dust and just brushed it onto the black parts of the skull. Um, the contrast between the way the white highlights things and the way that the black emphasizes shadows really makes it look like this skull has seen some sh stuff. Then I gave him a gold tooth and gave him some bling on one tooth. Like he was about to star in a Little Wayne's video. I took some black food coloring and just painted the inside of his eyes, his nostril cavity. It's a different color black than the skull, so it gives the illusion that it's hollow. Now I'm gonna add on this fool's braids. And our skull is done, but not yet. This fool's a pirate. What's a pirate without some treasure? That is what you are. I'm gonna take my cake stand, add on some bones, some fake jewelry that I bought at Party City. Gold chocolate coins, Hershey's kisses, and my favorite treasure, Ferrero Rochers. Ferrero. Ferrero Rochers. Place my skull on top, and bam, you guys, this spins like a boss. It doesn't look like a cake. And I'm so proud of that. I secretly want to like sneak this into Disneyland and then throw it into the Pirates of the Caribbean ride so people can just see it, you know? Because it doesn't look like a cake. But I actually saw this guy spill his father's ashes into the water. Um, and he got in trouble, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> now, if you want to see more Disney creations, there are a whole bunch of links for you in the description box. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram or Facebook because I post everything as soon as I finish it. Burst of Sunshine said, Amazeballs, love it. And Curtis Nathan said, OMG. You guys should follow them on YouTube. I love their stuff. I love you guys. I will see you very soon. Bye.